In this video, I'll tell you how you can do some simple drawing exercises to warm up before you paint or draw a large painting and how you can build muscle memory with practice. Hi, if you're new here, my name is Geetu and I have been creating studio vlogs for a while with a positive message and sometimes with some of my thoughts on different things. Just like you do warm-up sessions before an exercise or physical activity, it is important to have your creative muscles be ready to take on the painting that you're going to do. You could also use these drawing exercises as a way of therapeutic drawing sessions when you have very limited time to paint, yet want to flex your creative muscles. Always give your hand the respect and the energy flow to it, especially if you're going to be painting for hours. Take a moment to do some simple wrist movements and finger exercises before you start with any kind of painting. Practice drawing straight lines. Not only would these enhance your drawing skills, but would give you the confidence to draw larger objects without using a ruler. Start by placing dots a little further apart from each other and try connecting them using a single line. As you become more versed in this, move the second dot further away each time. The easiest way to connect the two dots is to have your hand trace the movement you want to make in the air and once you feel you have established the link between them, you can have your pencil touch the paper. Also make sure to do this in different directions because that way your hand will get used to drawing lines in any direction. Notice how several shapes can be made by connecting lines this way. Remember we used to have connecting the dots exercise as a child? It is exactly that, but at that point, who knew it was going to help build muscle memory? Now let us practice circles. Try drawing freehand circles, but I make it one step advanced by drawing concentric circles because this helps me to visualize the center of the circle that I did first. One important thing to note here is to draw the circles with your shoulders rather than your wrist. Keep your wrist fixed and steady while having your shoulders, that is your entire hand, move around to trace the shape of the circle. Practice as many circles as you can and you will notice that you get pro at drawing freehand circles in no time. Having the second circle inside the first lets me concentrate on the pencil movement and makes your brain to focus on the distance between the two. Let us now get back to our wrists from the shoulder. Practicing hatching or cross hatching lets you understand how you can control the distance between the lines that your pencil can make and lets you work with tight spaces and smaller detailing when you're ready to take on a real painting. Cross hatching is used by artists to create a value range in a drawing and is a great way to create the illusion of the three-dimensional effect in a two-dimensional surface. But what you may not realize is how those simple hatching techniques can create a very handy muscle memory for you when attempting to paint something small or that which needs a lot of curved and small detail lines. Remember to change the directions so that your wrist can get accustomed to each of those pencil marks. Try changing the position you hold your pencil and you will notice how different those lines turn out to be. Use this exercise to have fun and create different shapes with just tiny lines and you will find yourself zoning out. Those therapeutic patterns are creating muscle memory as well as giving you the creative satisfaction for the moment. Next exercise is line variation, which is super important to understand how applying different pressures on the pencil tip can create different lines. This is highly useful when sketching something or when attempting some drawing with pencils. A lot of times I have seen my students trying out the initial sketch before a painting with a very thick or darker line, and this later doesn't go off even after washes of watercolors. Thus, I feel it's important to learn this along with the ways you can hold your pencil at different angles to create the line variations. 
The best exercise is to draw this infinite loops but trying to vary the thickness at random places. It is a wonderful exercise and lets your fingers switch gears at the most unexpected places. Next exercise is my favorite of all which is to create tonal values. Create a rectangle and divide it into 9 or 10 boxes. Try starting with the lightest value and moving on to the darkest value. This is harder than it seems because you can't repeat a value. You can try the same with different materials such as colored pencil, a marker or even a sketch pen. Those values are going to help you visualize the tonal values and quickly point your attention to the mid-tones, the lightest and darkest values in your painting. I love to attempt this exercise with my watercolors as well because it gives me the complete perspective of each color that I have in my palette and lets me understand the values possible with each shade. This next exercise is going to help you sketch out most objects in this world and will certainly improve your perspective skills as a painter. Understand the most basic shape of a circle, square or rectangle and triangle and you will soon realize that almost everything can be broken down into these shapes. Starting with a cylinder, it is basically a rectangle with two circles at the end. Obviously, the circle is elongated and becomes an ellipse as we view it from the side. For example, if I was sketching out a candle, you can use these basic shapes to create almost all the lines on the sketch. Another example of a table lamp you can see is made up of a triangle, Circle cut out at the top and base, rectangles and circles for the base. Let me show you how I would sketch out this tape of mine. Of course, I would hold it at an angle so that I can see the cylindrical side, otherwise two circles would do the job. As you can see, it is again just a rectangle with two circles at the top. I'll show you one more example with this artificial plan thingy on my desk which is composed of just circles, as you can see. This is useful to sketch out domes of architectural buildings as well and saves you the time from creating uneven shapes. Practice different objects using this method and you will quickly start to visualize space and direction. If you place a cylinder with the top visible, that means the bottom is not visible and vice versa. Another one of my favorites to kill some time or to get better at my sketching skills is to practice perspectives. Try as many one point and two point perspectives as you can. My favorite is to try out footpaths, small buildings and railway tracks. They help me visualize perspectives in my head so that when I'm attempting an architectural sketch, it becomes second nature to me. One thing I would recommend to do is to try the one point perspective on the same horizon line but moving the vanishing point to one direction each time. This shows how much the lines have changed from where I placed the vanishing point from the previous one and this is super helpful to create perfect perspective lines when sometimes my vanishing point is out of the frame of my painting. You can also go ahead and practice multiple perspectives such as 2 point, 3 point and 5 point ones. Let your hands build that steady movement with each practice line that you do. Practicing gesture lines and creating different shapes has been so helpful for me to understand how each line can affect the three-dimensional form of the shape. Start by creating different funky shapes and then adding gesture lines inside them. You will observe that these gesture lines you add inside the shape gives it the three-dimensional form. The way your lines curve inward or outward determines the twisting and turning of the form of the funky shape that you created. This exercise will blow your mind as to how you can change the overall roundness of the shape and give you that understanding of how you can make an object three-dimensional in its form using just gesture lines. Lastly, this simple hack will improve your drawing skills in the best way. The left side of your brain is more analytical and thinking, 
whereas the right side is more of the creative and artistic space. So there are high chances that your left brain is shouting too many instructions at you when trying out a normal sketch and your artistic side is trying your best to capture the sketch. To completely eliminate this analytical side of your brain, one simple method I love to do is to turn my reference and paper upside down because this way it doesn't make sense to the lines that you're doing as we have never observed those images in the inverted format. Try this and you will quickly notice that you're now focusing on the directions and angles of the lines and shapes in your sketch rather than thinking, I'm drawing a camera, I'm drawing a camera. And there you go. Those are my go-to drawing exercises when I have even five minutes to kill and I can't get onto something else or start a new project. Remember, being an artist doesn't always have to be perfect paintings and complete drawings. You need to be able to practice and build muscle memory as much as you can. These simple techniques and hacks will take you a long way and slowly you will build that in-depth knowledge on values, form, shape and direction which will eventually help you in every painting that you do. Alright, that's it from me. This is Geetu signing off for today. Don't forget to let me know which one of these exercises you like the most and subscribe to my channel for more amazing vlogs and study sessions from me. See you in my next video. Bye-bye.